I did think it was interesting. You had kind of alluded to this the past couple of weeks of, you know, Ricardo maybe coming to peace with not being on the grid in 2023. He now admitted that he likely doesn't see himself on the grid. Just what did you make of him finally coming out and, and stating something like that? Yeah, it it has seemed more and more likely since the you know the further we've got away from from him. Uh, you know, the McLaren news that we had at the start of the the second half of the season. I think, to be honest with you, I think that Ricardo and you know the team around him were quite confident early on in Alpine, and then Alpine were quite set, or at least you know the the guys at the very top of the company were very keen on Gasly. I think that that idea of an all French team really appealed to them, which you totally understandable as well. You can see why you you know you get a fresh young. Um, exciting talent and, and I think since then Ricardo looked at the landscape and thought really what can I do at Hassan Williams that elevates my career you know and I don't want to be I don't want to sound like I'm putting those two teams down because I actually really like both those those teams but sure. if you're a driver like Ricardo you know dropping to the back of the grid it, it's very difficult to see how he can make a meaningful impact and that's where this Mercedes reserve driver kind of chat has come from does he does he keep himself active in Formula One in that way you know keep himself I mean it's, it wouldn't be a bad situation, would it? You know, you're, you're getting constant feedback from Lewis Hamilton, but you're also giving Lewis feedback. You're working with George Russell, you're working with Toto Wolff, you're working with some of the best brains in the business. And if one of them can't race, suddenly you, you're, you're in a front-running car for a race weekend. So if you're looking at, if you're Daniel Ricciardo and you're saying, what gives me the best chance of kind of elevate. coming back, elevate myself, I don't think staying racing in 2023 with one of those available options is going to do that. Um, so... I think it makes sense from that perspective. Obviously, the risk is that an opportunity doesn't open up. You know, we've seen sometimes people are set in their teams. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, very interesting situation. I think a shame he won't be around. But um, we'll, maybe in five years. I mean, we, we Katie, you mentioned, didn't you, about the Lewis move to Mercedes a few pods ago. And everyone at the time thought, what's he doing? He's, you know, why is he why is he doing this? Who knows? This could be something we look at in a few years with Ricardo and think, wow, what a, what a genius move that was to, to get away from you because this happened afterwards. You know, this it kind of fell together to for him. Yeah, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But um, I think the Mercedes thing is is still on the cards. I think that could still happen. But yeah, he, he definitely won't be racing next season. So um, I think he's probably going to be on our TV screens a lot, you know, just doing different things. But um, yeah, in terms of racing itself, we won't see him doing that. Um, and I think a lot of IndyCar and NASCAR fans are ashamed at that, a, a, a bit kind of um, found out to be a bit of a shame because I think both wanted to see him him race there and he'd be great for both series. But mm -hmm. from what I understand, I think at this stage in his career, it's F1 on nothing for him. I don't, I don't blame him for that. So obviously we're hopeful that he makes his way back, uh, but certainly sad to see him go for next season. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.